Our number one priority is tax reform. This will be the, the largest tax change since Reagan. We think by cutting corporate taxes will create huge economic growth and, and we'll have huge personal income. So the, the revenues will be offset on the other side. Everybody talks about tariffs as the first thing. Tariffs are the last thing. Tariffs are part of the negotiation. The real trick is going to be increase American exports. Get rid of some of the tariff and non-tariff barriers to American exports. So, Mark, um, <laughs> look at these pics, Mr. Ross, Mr. Munchkin, a.k.a. Mnuchin, um, and their resumes. Is it fair to ask the question at this point, what ever happened to populist Don Trump? Oh, very fair. We talked yesterday about the fact that Trump has put on a lot of Congress-friendly uh, people into the administration so far and is considering putting in a lot more. So there's that. Then there's this, these Goldman Sachs, uh, Harvard, Yale guys. We'll talk about a little bit more about Mr. Mnuchin in a second, but just in general, I mean, I, I can't imagine anything that involves, that's less looks like draining the swamp or being a populist or being an outsider than the series of picks that Trump has made. And I, I look, I think there's a lot of political peril ahead for Donald Trump if the people who elected him because of their ire and anger at Washington, D.C., at business as usual, at the financial elite, at Wall Street, suddenly start to think that Donald Trump is turning into another crony capitalist, and that is what a lot of these appointments look like. Uh, again, I, I have more to say about Mnuchin, which, are, which is problematic, but just alone, I think Trump is yeah. courting real danger here politically by giving, by thumbing his nose at the populist outrage that put him in office. Yeah. Explain yeah. to me the mystery. Why is the grassroots of the party, the, the populist wing, not rebelling at the notion of all these billionaires in economic policy positions? Well, there's a little bit of a quiet rebellion going along uh, right now. They're folk yeah, I mean, look, you've got, take the, um, they're selling access at the convention, or you have a million bucks, I mean, at the inauguration, give a million bucks, you get access. This is, this is the swamp personified. When, when yeah. the phrase drain the swamp was chanted at those Trump rallies in the Midwest, for, in Iowa, in Wisconsin, in Michigan, what do you think people thought that meant? Ah, good question. Uh, well, from what I understand and, and what I myself thought it meant was we're not going to play in that game, in that swamp anymore. In fact, we're going to drain it.